true or false? I can provide reasonably convincing evidence of why I believe to those who ask. And that's in reference to 1 Peter 3.15, which reads, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So the, the question, the idea of the question is, you can, uh, you know, if you're in, a, in an elevator or whatever, and you know, you have a limited amount of time, maybe not, you know, five minutes, but maybe you had an hour or half, half an hour, you could rattle off uh, a laundry list of reasons why you believe. Um, so uh, that that's the question. Mm -hmm. Okay. And was that asked by a panelist? Yes, that's actually my question. Okay, so you have to go last, okay? All right, how about Sister Lisa? Could you start us off? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I would say certainly true. I mean, uh, it would depend on, like, the person, if uh, how much time I had with them to kind of size up what I thought might, you know, resonate with them uh, in the examples. But if I didn't know them and somebody, like you're saying, you're on an elevator and you only had a couple of seconds and, you know, maybe they saw your Jesus pen or something and they ask, well, how could you believe or why do you believe or isn't that silly? I, you know, believing in, you know, something up in the sky somewhere. Uh, you know, I, I, I would just point immediately to the wonders of his creation because I think everyone has seen that and no, took notice of it. And people fly around the world to go look at different beautiful locations like Niagara Falls. I mean, I, I don't know if, if you're just using that as an example. <laughs> that water never stops running. I mean, you guys should go look, go pull, go pull up a video of Niagara Falls where they're showing that water. It never stops running. That's 24-7, 365 for how many millennia now? It's never stopped running. So, you know, who's in charge of that? You know, where where's the chief responsible for Niagara Falls? I mean, it's just. You know, there's there's no maintenance crew. It's just it is what it is. It's a wondrous thing. And uh, there's there's a thousand different examples like that that you could easily point to about the glory of his creation, the magnitude of it. Um, so, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I don't think it would take much to point to, you know, as the Bible says, um, I, I was just talking to another sister about this the other night how the heavens declare the glory of God, you literally could walk outside and look up and have a million reasons to believe when you see the sky. But, you know, people, they, I don't know if it's because of the busyness of our lives. I think that's a part of it. The devil tries to keep you so busy. And then he's got my, um, mind numbing stuff to keep people in darkness and to keep people entertained literally to keep their mind captured so that they don't think about such things and they don't think about the wonders and the beauty of of his creation that's all around us and you know uh it, it's sad but it's true people's minds are filled with so many different things how they're going to pay this bill and how they're going to do that and they don't stop to look at the amazing you know beautiful roles that you know, why is that there? What What is the purpose of a rose, you know, other than for man to appreciate and smell? And, you know, it's like um, they, they don't stop and think uh, about those things. And it's sad because if they did, they'd see the glory of God all around them. Even pets uh, are a witness to <laughs> who made these animals. They're all different. And, and yet, uh, you know, almost like uh, Sister Angel has remarked before, like designed to be a, a pet for man, you know, it's just, it's all right there, but people aren't paying attention. Their mind is too full of the cares of the day to even stop and reflect about God's glory all throughout the earth. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Brother Ben, why don't you go next? 
Okay, it, it was my question, but I can go. I don't. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot. It's, it's a it's a rule violation. You can't go next. You gotta wait. Sorry. Okay. Sister Heather, <laughs> go ahead. I am actually super excited about this question because my pastor gave an amazing message this sun this past Sunday on this. Um, he was talking about um, kids coming uh, growing up in Christianity and coming and into um, higher education places and and coming away from falling away from um, the belief in the Bible because they don't have a way to refute it. And when people ask them questions, they don't have an answer. So he laid out some answers that I absolutely loved. But the one that he said that was like the punchline is he got up. Jesus got up. That is how I, that is why I believe that there was a, a global flood because Jesus got up. That's why I believe the story of David and Goliath because he got up. And you know what? If, if Jesus birth before Jesus birth, the prophecies that were fulfilled before his birth were the only thing that ever happened. That still proves it. And if his ministry and the, the healings that he, that he did and the miracles that he performed were the only thing, it still proves it to me. And if his death were the only thing that I had to look at, it still proves it to me because it's all prophesied in the Bible. But the fact that he stood up out of that grave, that proves it all to me. Amen. He's risen. All right. Sister Renee. Yeah. Well, I would, I would say certainly true. Uh, but people find, you know, if they come at me in a negative way, uh, like Lisa was saying, that mocking tone, you're going to believe in the magic man in the sky and all of that. I asked them, well, how much research have you actually done into confirming whether the Bible's true? Or are you just reading articles written by atheists? Have you, have you looked at both sides of it? Because I did. And I'm not an idiot. And I don't place thing, my, my whole hope of existence on something that doesn't have proof. I am not blindly faithful. And I tell them it takes more faith for me to believe the ridiculous claims of atheism and cre without create without a creator than it does for me to believe the Bible, which, by the way, has both historical and archaeological proof. But the thing that made me realize the Bible is actually supernatural were the plethora of prophecies that were written before they occurred and were fulfilled, not, you know, not just as whole, but in Christ and how everything pointed to him. And um, I tell them, if you want a detailed account of why I know what I know, I'm happy to sit down with you. But what I usually do is I tell them I have reasons for my faith. I'm happy to give those to you. Here are some good resources for it. But it all rests, like Heather said, on the resurrection of Jesus. And so I give them the gospel and I tell them, you may have been raised in religion. You may have been told you have to live a certain way or God's going to uh, hate you or not save you. or And so I go and tell them that none of that's true. And I give them the gospel about God's great love for us. And how Jesus paid the, the sin for us and that he's willing to come and live actually in us. His spirit is willing to come and dwell within each person who trusts Christ as Savior. And then they will have the same understanding. They'll be able to go into God's word and God will show them these things too. But at, if they are wanting to know, do I have evidence for my faith? Absolutely. It would take me a long time to go through all of it. But if you want to know the truth, 
I am happy to show it to you, but I make sure that they know the gospel and that the seed is planted in them. You know, and I tell them it's, it's, it's really silly and it's, it's stupid actually that God offers immortality, eternal life as a free gift because of what Christ did for us. For anybody to reject that, well, if that was my son who suffered for you, I'd be mad too. So I, I let them know that eternal life is a free gift. There's plenty of evidence for Christ, the resurrection. If they want to know all the things that support why I believe what I believe, that we're not believers in blind faith. We don't have blind faith. We're not like the Muslims who have this blind faith. They ne they don't know anything for certain. And they try to say that those that trust that Christ died and rose again don't have it. They have no certainty. They, there's no proof. That's what their Quran says. But that's a fat lie. 500 people at once saw Jesus Christ risen. There is tons of evidence. And then there's the historical evidence also. If you look in... Uh, uh, Roman and other historians, even the Chinese have record of a eclipse without an eclipse. The time of darkness in the middle of the day at the exact time of Jesus's death. So we have corroborating evidence that way as well. So yeah, I am happy to tell them that I have tons of evidence for what I believe. It is not blind faith. But I make sure if I have a short amount of time to give them the gospel and I let them know uh, they don't know as much as they think they know. They are just parroting all the atheists they've heard online. They are parroting all those that came against Christianity that are clueless as to what Christianity actually believes and teaches. So. Uh, once they get to the point where they think they know, I actually have people say, well, I'm not going to get in a Bible argument with you. Good thing. Good thing. And every person should get into that. And it's not a matter of us <laughs> being arrogant or no, we got to know in whom we believed. And we've got to make these people realize just because they're atheists and they use a lot of big words, it doesn't make them smarter. It doesn't make, they try to look down on you and laugh at you and insult you like you're some kind of idiot for believing until you show them what their teachers actually believe. That we all came from like, I, oh, I'm a cousin to a rock or a banana peel. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yes, it is. And if you take it back to the natural conclusion of what atheism teaches, that's exactly what it teaches. So they want to make you feel that it, you're ignorant or stupid for believing the Bible and the magic man in the sky, show them what they really believe. Take it to the natural conclusion of where atheism takes you. No purpose, no reason, nothing, no hope. And you can, you can find the most ridiculous things that atheism teaches. You really can. And, uh, I, I think that's the main thing. Christians get intimidated by all this so-called science. They claim it's science. They, don't be. Do not let somebody intimidate you into making them think, making you think that they are superior in intellect. The Bible says, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? The wisdom of man is foolishness to God. So in a short span, they get the gospel. And they also know our faith is not blind. We have plenty of evidence for it. Oh, amen. That's so fantastic statement, sister. Uh, uh, you gave us a lot of information. I noticed, uh, I believe four times uh, as you spoke, you repeated that I make sure I give them the gospel. And I'm glad you said that. I, I believe we're going to all say a lot of things, but that's the one thing that uh, really stood out to me that we have to keep in mind. Regardless of our ability and uh, how thorough we can be in proving the Bible and proving our faith to someone, uh, let's never fail to at least make sure they hear the gospel. Okay? 
when I got saved, uh, I was saved by faith alone. I didn't have any proof. I didn't have any evidence. There was no reason for me to believe uh, in terms of the, when I compare what I know now that, that I can offer as proof of my, uh, that, that it's all true. I didn't have that, but uh, I believed anyway. Yeah, that's what that's what the Lord wants. But that's what the Lord values from us. That's why he said to Thomas, now that you've seen me and touched me, you believe. But those people who never get to see me or touch me and they believe they're the ones that are blessed. That's the one. That's what I value. That's what the Lord values is uh, us believing without seeing. Uh, so uh, I do think that um, every time, every person who becomes a believer, uh, the, the, the first thing you can do is get water baptized and invite all your friends and family to this to the ceremony. And, and you know, it's 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 a it's kind of like a graduation. You invite people to your graduation, and a lot of people will go will, will attend things like that, and, and uh, just out of respect for you. And hey, he's having a big event in his life, so I'll, I'll go attend to support him. But by them coming to your water baptism, they're going to hear the gospel message in, 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 during the, the baptism. Uh, so that's the very first thing a person can do. And then, and then you can, after, in addition to that, the next thing you do is you give your testimony. You, you, people will say, hey, Luke, what you been up to? Well, I can actually say, I'm studying the Bible. I'm learning all about the Bible and, and, and I'm learning more about Jesus. And you know, this is what I've been up to. So if you're busy in the scriptures, if you're busy in ministry, you're busy in your own study and reading and prayer and fellowship, then the answer to every question is, hey, what's up? Well, what's up with me is my faith is, is being playing out in my life. So those are things that we should be able to do. But after the, after you have those established, you've got your water baptism, you've got your testimony. Uh, the next thing is uh, for those people who say, well, that's good, but, you know, I don't believe that. And, you know, you, you, know, you don't know that for sure. How can you know that? But then you need to become what in theology is called an apologist. Tertullian was considered to be the first apologist. Uh, and he wrote, and many people in that era started writing proofs uh, to support the philosophical, you know, all kinds of arguments that, uh, to prove that God exists and their faith in Jesus and the scriptures uh, is supported, uh, can be backed up. So uh, you need to make an effort. And it says, always study, show yourself approved, be ready with an answer. Well, study is not easy. It's work. So you need to get to work. Okay. People say that we don't believe in works. You're crazy. I'm, all of us here work a lot in our faith, but we don't believe in our works for salvation. <laughs> um, so I was talking to my wife over dinner tonight and, and this, uh, I said, how long have you known me to, you know, she's known me for 41 years now. We've been married for about 41 years. And I said, how long have you known me that, to, that watched me study the Bibles consistently? And she said, oh, a long time. I said, yeah, well, it would be uh, 34 years. I've been studying the Bible. I haven't ever had a period where I just lost interest in it. So uh, th that's work. That's a lot of effort I put into it. I just pulled this off of my bookshelf. These are a bunch of books here. Every one of these is apologetics books. This one book right here resulted in three of my family and friends getting saved. This little book here, it's a... 128 pages, more than a carpenter by Josh McDowell. And uh, I used to pass this out. I would buy them in bulk. And uh, I wouldn't pass them out as freely as a Bible tract because they're more expensive than tracts. But uh, if, if, if I got in a conversation with someone and, and I knew that this person would actually read it, I would give them one. Um, but I, I would say that if a person, and you're in a conversation and you only have a little bit of time, it's one thing. But if you really want a person to have the, enough information 
so that they, they, they're persuaded by the evidence, it's going to take some effort on their part. So they're going to use the balls in their court. Do you really want to know the truth? Or are you just talking for talking's sake? Are you arguing or are you actually interested in learning and finding out if it's true or not? If you really want to know the truth, and, and then uh, you, you, you can you can know it. I'll I'll direct you, and I will tell them about books. I'll tell them about my playlists. I have a playlist: science, God, and the Bible. Another one: philosophy, God, the Bible. Uh, this one I did a playlist just on this book. A group of us read the book together and discussed it. And, and the title of that playlist is the Resurrection. That's the greatest proof in history of Jesus, uh, his deity and the, the, the gospel, that, that's the real proof, the most important thing that we could tell someone about. And uh, so watch the playlist, The Resurrection, or get this little book here. Uh, this book is by Lee Strobel, The Case for Christ. He wrote another one, oh, that's, no, that's The Case for Faith. For these, he's presenting, uh, uh, really good arguments to, to show a person that, look, our faith is not blind. These are the reasons that, by the way, as I said, my faith initially was not supported by evidence. I just read the scriptures and I just felt it was true and I believed it and I got saved. But I didn't have anything. I couldn't back it up and support it. But by reading all these books, I found out my faith is actually supported by a ton of evidence. So you got... The Case for Faith by Lee Strobel, The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel, Josh McDowell, Tough Questions, How to Answer the Questions When People Are Skeptics, Josh McDowell, Evidence That Demands a Verdict. This covers full, uh, showing you that the Bible is historically correct, archaeologically cor correct, scientifically correct, the prophecies in the Bible that, that uh, show, show that it's God consistently told us details of the future that it, it obviously had to come from God because there's so it's, it's not like vague uh, uh, predictions from Gene Dixon or Edward Casey or people like that. These are clear uh, predictions that are great details, like thirty pieces of silver. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of details that make these uh, prophecies. Uh, it couldn't, it's not just luck that they happen to guess right. Another one, a ready defense by Josh McDowell and reasons to believe by John Marks. I mean, these, I think that if you have done your water baptism, if you've been able to give your t personal testimony, if you feel good about presenting the gospel, every opportunity you get, and now you're at the point where you, you want to be able to uh, give them an answer for the people who say, well, okay, that's fine for you, but I think it's just a fairy tale. You can't prove it, you know. Well, then you need to read these books or you need to go to my playlist. So, uh, and you don't necessarily have to be able to regurgitate everything that you, that's in these books. There's a lot of information. You could learn some of the most important things and be able to repeat them. It's not going to be difficult, but I think what you need to determine is, is the person I'm talking to really sincere? Because if they're sincere, they should be willing to read a book. They should be willing to watch a playlist. So if you give them a book or tell them about it, you send them a playlist, and if they don't read it, then you know that, hey, they were just wasting your time anyway. You're, you're better off spending your time on someone who's actually sincere instead of wasting your time on someone who's just there they're, uh, you know, to argue. Uh, all right. Uh, I think I covered everything. Ben, what do you, what do you say? You wrote the question, didn't you? Uh, yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, I like you, like you, Luke, I read the Bible too. And, and I, as I was reading it, you know, I read it as an adult. I was kind of going through Genesis and I just kind of read about how Noah lived for so long and just, you know, strange things that I did. I read it like a, like a, uh, just so I didn't even realize it, I, you know. I, I but I, I put all my cynicism and criticism and skepticism aside and just read it, and I just knew it was the word of God. And then, then it kind of occurred to me, okay, hey, this could it started to occur to me. This is conflicting with everything the world is, teaches me, and so 
it, that really bothered me because I believed the Bible, but I couldn't prove it. And I felt like I, I almost felt like I had no reason to believe or I had no right to believe. I know this was foolish, but this is back then when a new believer. I felt like I had no reason or uh, uh, I had no right to believe until I could I could prove it reasonably. And so I really went hard into apologetics. And I've maintained, I've maintained a list. I mean, I, like, like Renee said, I, I have hundreds of little evidences um, all over the place uh, that I actually have a, a list I maintained. Uh, some, I mean, it's not comprehensive, but it's, it, 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 I probably have 100, 200 reasons uh, I'm looking at right now of why I believe. And uh, a couple of them would be, you know, for example, uh, that, you know, the Bible, the whole narrative from start to finish is counter to the designs and motivations of sinful man. You know, if it was written by man, it wouldn't be flattering. If it was written by uh, man, Jews, for example, it's a complete embarrassment to the Jew. I mean, uh, and, and you know, it's not flattering to them whatsoever. It, you know, the whole idea that of the perfect, uncompromising righteousness um, uh, is it, based on a lie. The whole Bible is about uncompromising, perfect righteousness, and you're going to tell me that whole. It, it's all a lie, and when you know it, it is righteous, you know, and um, so again, it, it's impossible that such a, a, an intricate and interwoven story uh, that would unfold over thousands of years with people that you know weren't necessarily even related or even knew each other. Um, there's no evidence of any collusion, and even if men tried to collude over thousands of years, it, it's impossible. It, it goes beyond what what they could predict. Uh, or that, that you know they it, they couldn't guarantee that they'd even be in the land, for example, when Christ was uh, crucified. Yet they were. Um, so I mean, and, and like you said, there's all kinds of secular um, uh, witnesses witnesses from history, like Pliny, Tacitus, the Talmud, Justin Martyr, uh, and some of those are hostile witnesses. But even they will say things like, you know, Jesus existed, was had was said to perform miracles. Uh, was crucified on the eve of uh, on the eve of Passover when the sky was darkened and there was an earthquake. That's fascinating. Uh, that the tomb was empty and that and, the, and that the disciples supposedly stole the body. They, there's evidence of 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 uh, the letters that the Pharisees distributed out, telling people uh, that they spread out throughout the land. For example, that the disciples stole the body. Um, uh, the the the, you know, the Bible talked about. There's hints, t types, and hints of the crucifixion. Um, uh, almost 1,500 years uh, before crucifixion was even invented. And um, uh, it, it, so, you know, again, before crucif crucifixion was even invented in 519 BC by the Greeks, uh, there's all kinds of types of channels of the crucifixion. Um, there's a thing known as hapax legomenon. It's, it's a, I, I don't know, I think it's a Latin word. It basically means a word that's used once in the Bible, and it's specific to that time. So, you know, people say, oh, the Bible's all written in 600 AD or, what, or 600 BC. Well, even if it was, that's still 600 years before Christ came onto the scene. That You're going to say that you could predict off the, all these intricate details uh, that would unfold even 600 years from now. Uh, that's impossible. It's, it's, it's impossible. But even then, uh, that's, that's again, that's a very skeptical view that the Bible was written 600 AD or BC. I believe it was written, you know, way before that. Uh, you know, possibly even before two, 2000 BC. And um, and these words that are used are, are very specific to that time and place, where they're not used any other other any other time in the Bible or any other place in the world. And there's no way a forger could go back, you know, n know that 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 unique word was used back in that time. And all kinds of uh, uh, archaic laws that you, especially when you read in Genesis, that people just uh, uh, skeptics uh, refuted for a long time, saying, "Oh no, that's not what the law was like." Uh, I'm talking about things like you know how you how a slave could uh, have uh, inheritance rights and things like that. The cr critics uh, refuted those for years. And then they found, uh, you know, over time, in, in the 50s, 60s or whatever, they found these tablets under the ground in the same place where these events occurred. And sure enough, they attest to these uh, archaic laws. Um, you know, there's there's things like uh, in the creation, like, like I think Lisa touched on it, like, like an insect, for example, will look exactly like its surroundings. Like a, you know, it'd be a leaf insect that looks exactly like its surroundings. Are you telling me that that evolved by chance? And not only for that particular insect, but all over creation, there's you know, uh, all kinds of animals look exactly like their surroundings. Um, 
You know, we Fox Book of Martyrs, for example, why were so many willing to die? Um, there's the prophecy of, you know, that the Messiah would um, you carry his cross. Uh, you know, Isaac carried, his, carried the wood. Um, you know, that again, those were things written hundreds of years, even if it's the most skeptical view, because we know the Dead Sea Scrolls were written uh, in like uh, 300 years before Christ. And, uh, you know, it, it talked about the Messiah would carry, you know, carry the wood, uh, that, that he would be, uh, he would drink gull. And, um, and, oh, and, the, and that bones, his bones couldn't be broken. And those were all customary things that the, that the Romans did. Uh, again, the, how would anyone know that 300 years before uh, when, when Roman wasn't even an empire at that point? And again, I, I think it goes way beyond 300 year, years before. I think it goes thousands of years before. Um, you know, all these strange, ver various strange and unexplained rituals in the Old Testament and our types of channels of, of Christ's ministry and his life and his accomplishments. Um, you know, they the whole idea that uh, the, the, the Romans uh, participated in the crucifixion and they destroyed the temple. How Even if this was like a Jewish conspiracy, they would know, you're telling me they would... They knew a hundred, uh, hundreds of years in advance that they were going to be able to get the greatest nation in the world to conspire with them to uh, destroy their temple and you know crucify someone uh, who, who pretended to be uh, the Messiah or claimed to be the Messiah. Um, there's so many things on and on and on. Even like I, I just little things like I mentioned earlier about the uh, the um, the ancient uh, kneading troughs. It looks like exactly like an ancient tomb. That's how the what the tombs look like. When they were carved in stone in the ancient world, um, they're just on and on and on. And I think anyone with the, oh, you know, even the precise timing of when the Messiah would arrive up, arrive on the scene. Um, so there, there's there's a ton of evidence, and um, I get really excited by. I love apologetics. Um, I'm less I do it less now because before I was really motivated for selfish reasons, uh, but now it's like so overwhelming to me. I don't even question it. Um, but I think it's important to have these things for unbelievers um and it's sad because i i, I offer this to my family and it's like they're just disinterested you know they're, they, they don't care uh like you said luke i've given those books like you you've given uh them uh and it's like they okay you know i i felt like at one point like i i felt like okay well maybe this was maybe this will do it you know i kept on giving them evidence after evidence after evidence and i kept on holding out hope okay oh this is the this is going to seal the deal and it's really a heart issue. Um, I think the heart uh, acts as a filter. Um, and I mean, I have, I even have to battle that myself. You know, a lot of times when I'm looking into something that I don't want to believe it, I, it's it's convenient for not for me not wanting to, to look into it. But I have to force myself to look into it. Um, and so, uh, but a lot of people aren't willing to do that. You know, they don't they don't want to know the truth. They want to, they well they suppress the truth and their unrighteousness as we as we know. Um, in fact, even another another great evidence is that you know. Uh, that Israel's in the land today, and that it says that the Jews uh, would be hardened until the Gentiles, uh, the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And sure enough, that, that we were seeing that prophecy in active fulfillment. Uh, there's very few Jews who believe on, on Christ. Um, they are hardened until, some of them are hardened until, um, again, they've hardened themselves, uh, but they're hardened until the fullness of the Gentiles have come in. Um, so, there's just so many uh, fascinating things that uh, with apologetics, and it's overwhelmingly true. So, uh, but you guys all gave great answers. Uh, I'll stop there if anyone wants to follow up. But I, I can also read the chat comments too. I, I wanted to uh, focus on something Ben said. You know, it's a hard issue. They don't want to believe. That's the key there. Most people don't want to believe the Bible because it co it condemns them. Uh, but once you, that's a good starting place because the law does its job. It's supposed to make you guilty and show you your need for a savior. That's why that's the, the gospel is so great. But also there's many that don't want to believe God. I have heard some of them say it doesn't matter the evidence. They still won't believe. And if it was proven that he was true, they hate him so much, they would never worship him. So <clears throat> in those cases, you really can't do anything. And I think it's important for us to know the burden of proof is not on us. And I tell them, I don't get some prize for converting you. I, I don't care what you believe. But if you want to answer for what I believe and why, 
and you really have an open mind, I, I'm excited about it. I'm happy to show it to you. If you want to know the Bible's true, you'll find out. It really is true, and there's evidence for it. But if you don't want to know that, doesn't matter what I show you, you'll never be convinced. And so it really is a matter of the heart. Many do not want it to be true. They don't like, and you'll hear things like, more people have been killed in the name of no, that's a bunch of garbage because atheist regimes have killed more people than any religion because they'll go back to the oh look at uh, uh the spanish inquisition which killed thousands but you look at stalin and atheist regimes that killed hundreds of millions like in china and other atheist communist regimes so don't let them pull that mess on you. That religion, okay, I'm not preaching religion. I don't believe in religion. I believe in a person, Jesus Christ, the Savior. I believe in the one true God. And just because evil things are done in the name of God doesn't mean God is bad. All that does is show you how bad man actually is and why you need a Savior. So don't let people use these ridiculous arguments to mess you up or to wiggle out of it because like everybody's pointed out here they don't want to believe switch put the great verse that's in acts 13 acts 40 13 41 behold ye despisers and wonder and perish for i work a work in your days a work which ye shall in no wise believe though a man declare it unto you. So there's going to be some that won't believe no matter what. That's just the way it is. But as far as us having evidence for our faith, we have tons of it, tons of it. But you cannot stress out because somebody will not hear it or no matter what you show them, they won't believe it. You know, it, it's not on us. All we're supposed to do is have a reason for our faith and the hope that is in us. And we all have that. Mm -hmm. So we pray for people. We pray that God give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And then we give a reason for the hope that's in us. That's all we can do. Mm, amen. Well, many years ago, I read this book by Og Mandino uh, named uh, uh, The Greatest Salesman in the World. It was a huge bestseller i read it because i was a salesman and uh so i read i used to read all kinds of sales books and how to be a salesman uh but one of the things it, it was it turns out it was about this guy named saul of tarsus <laughs> so uh and the idea was that saul of tarsus was the greatest salesman in the world but uh uh, in a way, what we are doing it is a form of sales. We, we make a presentation, we answer questions, we answer objections. Maybe we can even ask them uh, to, to buy into it, to believe it, you know, but uh, uh, we can't make them believe. Uh, and, but I think we need to make sure we have discernment and recognize that it's just like in sales. Uh, I would not want to waste my time. What if I had one customer and I was to spend all day with the one customer and I didn't close the sale. And every day I go back to that same customer. I mean, I'm going to go hungry. I won't make any sales if I'm just, I need to go out and talk to a lot of different people. And maybe if I talk to 10 people or a hundred people, then I'll get a sale. So it's the same thing with the gospel. We need to spread a lot of seeds. And then when we find someone who's really interested, we can spend more time with them. So that, that's the smart way, way to do it. But Ben, I, I probably heard the gospel, or at least some version of it, uh, several times in my life. People tried to witness to me, I can recall. And I was polite, and, you know, just, you know, did, I listened for a minute and politely tried to excuse myself. But when I wanted to know the, the truth, when I was seeking the truth, then, then that was the right time. But for me, my mother had to die. And that's what has to happen for a lot of people. You, they have to be knocked down on their knees. They're not going to just willingly just be eager to get on their knees and seek God, but they need to be desperate. And uh, that's, that's what happened to me. Uh, we, this is the kind of question 
that we could easily take 10, 15, 20 hours. The group we have right here, I'm sure we could take that much time and go on and on. If we wanted to go into all the details, like some of the things Ben was talking about, Renee, the, the, the details. I, I didn't mention any details except 30 pieces of silver, but there's, there's only about 100,000 arguments we have to prove our faith. So it's, it's endless the amount of answers we do have. Uh, but I think we're just trying to explain that, hey, you need to study and be ready, but you need to be uh, wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. So recognize who you're dealing with. And if they're just someone who's there to argue, don't waste your time. But if someone's sincere, then give them all the answers that, that, that they'll need. And uh, uh, let me see, Lisa, what, do you have more to say about this? Surprised you Sorry, did. slow on the mute button. Did I surprise no, you? No, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, well, no, I was listening, but uh, I was in a different window. No, I'm good. I said everything I wanted to say. Okay, Heather? Any more? Heather's probably gone. She's probably busy with Liam. Okay. I'm, I am here. Um, I actually am going to go take him and lay him down in his bed. He's finally falling asleep. But no, I don't have anything else to say on this one. Um, okay. I think that everybody covered it very well. And and the only thing I would say is um, to Ben and Brother Luke, I would love to see some of y'all's notes at some point on the Absolutely. apologetic stuff that you've looked into. Sure. Well, um, I have files and notes on all kinds of subjects, but on apologetics, I don't really have any notes. Uh, I just have my playlists. I told you about that. Just go to my channel and find Science, God, and the Bible, Philosophy, God, and the Bible, The Resurrection. And there's a bunch of playlists that are on this, this subject. Uh, okay, uh, boy, we've had two really good questions. We spent a lot of time just on two questions. And Ben, you were worried that we would zoom right through these questions and run out. Yeah, uh, I'm going to read the uh, co comments from chat for this question here. Um, okay. uh, by the way, I, I would say some of the once you become a believer, what I think the best evidence is the spiritual evidence. You know, the 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 spiritual things that you see in Scripture that are you know almost uh, ineffable. You know, of how how things you know of how you see things in Scripture, and uh, even before um, when I before I was a believer, um, I, I was never antagonistic against the Bible. I just didn't really investigate it um and for me just the whole drawing the god drawing me uh was very supernatural and i knew that the conviction of the holy spirit i knew that was you know very real and then once i believed you know i got i had a taste of the holy spirit and then said, wow this is i don't care what anyone says i don't i don't, I don't this is absolutely real um